my name is Idris uh, Ugaizi. I'm the, the newly appointed executive secretary of the National Board for Technical Education here in Kaduna. Well, TBS is the sector that deals with aspects of technical skills, access and training, and all areas of uh, you know, skills that are needed by industry. This sector is vital for the growth of the economy. We supervise already relates over 640 institutions, uh, both tertiary and some even at secondary level, technical colleges. We are also in charge of skills training of the informal sector and uh, you know, the industrial training that are being provided across the country by the different stakeholders. So this is a very important uh, agency that needs to really reposition the Tibet sector so that we can deliver uh, the required manpower to move the economy forward. So basically that's what we need. All right, talking about uh, delivering of the required manpower, you left an institution to a much bigger place, which is carefully. We know the kind of revolution. Yes. We know the kind of revolution you, you, you brought about. Yes. Now, what are the challenges facing TV education? Well, the challenges are many. Number one, both governments and even parents do not value Tibet. Funding of Tibet is dismally low. There are more conventional universities across the country than even the federal polytechnics that we have, federal and state polytechnics that we have. There is also you see deindustrialization going on. So the industries in Kaduna, for example, most of them have collapsed, and therefore they are not given the opportunity to train some of our students in the different skills. And there are other challenges that are global. The so-called liberalization of trade, whereby people just report anything they want from China, from other countries, is also not helping help the center. So I think there is need for us to get all stakeholders on board, governments, industries, even parents, so that we value what Tibet is and we participate in revamping it. At the moment, parents even prefer their child to go to a university than to go to a polytechnic. Now the polytechnic themselves, they only do technical education. They don't do the vocational ones. And it's part of their mandate to do vocational. The way skills are being impacted. And in the modern world, the money is in that vocational skills education. If you go outside Nigeria, go to Europe, go to Asia, the best paid are those who have the skills. And therefore, there is need for us really in Nigeria to re-engineer this sector so that all stakeholders will be brought on board and we can now be able to uh, train more Nigerians, especially with this unemployment all over the place. Uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, social insecurity will be related to unemployment. If we can reposition this sector, we can get Nigerian youth to be properly skilled and they can move across the globe, you know, and fill the different skill gaps in different countries of the world. And they will be welcome there with their carpets. Not the way Nigerian youth are crossing the Mediterranean, you know, being scorned upon and then being unwanted, being rejected. They go to the Lampos Dusa Island in Italy and they're being, you know, many of them die on the way. I have seen how why Tibet works very well in the African continent. And we're trying to remodel Nigerian Tibet sector so that we can catch up with those global best practices. All right, you spoke about the importance of Tibet in creating jobs. What, how do we achieve that? As in, what is it? Well, basically, number one, we need to find a way to re-industrialize Nigeria. The textile industries that have collapsed, how do we bring them back? The sugar factories that have closed down, 
the paper mills, ordinary writing paper and tissue paper, we don't make it in Nigeria anymore. The different manufacturing industries, even toothpick, we import from China. Plastic industries, we buy the pellets from outside. The polypropylene, the polyethylene, the polycarbonate, and the rest of them. All these need, we, we need to re-industrialize. That's the foundation. Because without industries, you can't move the TV sector forward. In fact, we are supposed to do training to fit with the needs of industry. So industry is supposed to be the prime driver of the Tibet sector. Globally, that has been the practice. But the government can come in to create the correct environment for that to happen, by supporting those industries to be revived, by providing the necessary machineries and equipment needed for the training in the polytechnics and other Tibet institutions, and also by making the sector even attractive. At the moment, as I told you, we have so many university graduates roaming about with certificates without skills, only degrees, and they are not employable. Sometimes they are underemployed. So there is need for us to reinvent the wheel. Well, we can't reinvent the wheel. But for the civil sector, we need to reinvent that sector so that it will be more attractive. I'll give you an example. A professor in the UK earns 5,000 pounds monthly. But somebody who has skills, who has reached the level of master craftsman, his salary is 14,000 pounds, go and change the records. Almost three times that of a professor. That's how it's supposed to be. While I was working in the Nigerian, in the Nigerian uh, paper, I mean, I know we used to have an annual maintenance of avoidance. And during that maintenance exercise, we had to bring skilled, welders from overseas, pay them per hour. That was in the early 1980s. Why can't we now develop those skilled hands within the Nigerian economy? So MBT has already identified the skill gaps needed to move the economy forward. But unfortunately, we don't have the adequate funding for the training. Even the curricula, even the national occupational standards for vocational education are inadequate, grossly inadequate. We have curricula. When I came here, I made curricula that is as old as 1986. Technology has changed in the last 40 years. What was done in the 1980s cannot be done today. Otherwise, you will not be competitive. That industry will close down. So we need to also update those curricula of the technical education. We need to develop the NOS, the National Educational Standards for the Vocational Education. We also need to train the assessors and verifiers who will run the vocational education. The statistics for, 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 for verifiers and assessors is extremely poor in this country. We have just 1,420. 1,420 for a population of 200 million. Ethiopia has about 35,000. A ratio of 1 to 50 against Nigeria. So that's why many African countries are doing better. French-speaking countries are even being, doing better than Nigeria in skills. If you go to Abuja, the best POP, the best stylists are from Togo and Benin. And we have youth here who we can train, give them the correct you know, skills set, and they'll be able to perform all those uh, functions. The APK gas pipeline, they are going to employ 5,000 skilled manpower. At the moment, the welders we have are just people who can go outside welding, not the high pressure welding of about 100 bar that the AKK is going to deliver. So there is need for us to retrain them so that they can fit. We don't need to bring manpower from outside in order to deliver the AKK gas pipeline. The industry that will follow the AKK, we also need to plan on the manpower to drive it so that the training can be rolled out. Government needs to really engage us very actively and give us adequate funding so that we may be able to move this sector forward. Because that, in doing that lies the solution to unemployment in Nigeria, lies the solution to import substitution, and lies the solution to increase GDP for the country. And therefore, in a way, the country will even be more secure. All right, sir. Now, uh, you spoke about the fact that uh, the curricula you made has been in existence since 1986. Now, is there any role you think the National Assembly can play in order to 
bring about new laws that will help your, well, your job. What we want the National Assembly to do is to, bring, to give more funding to the, to the uh, polytechnics. Uh, at the moment you'll find the allocation for polytechnics sometimes one third of what the universities are given. A conventional university doesn't require the equipment needed in a polytechnic. We are capital intensive. The machineries in workshops, the machineries in laboratories are capital intensive. A university running business, business and mass communication doesn't even need a laboratory. Yet they are given more funding than the polytechnics. This, the National Assembly must do something about. Secondly, the National Assembly should stop converting polytechnics into conventional universities. Recently, they passed a law converting one of the parent polytechnics. That is a disservice to the economy of Nigeria. What polytechnics require is give them degree awarding status. Like it is happening in many countries across the world, in South Africa, in Ghana, in many other uh, countries of the world. They allow polytechnics to operate, to run degree programs. When you do the NE, if you like, you go to do the HND, like I found in South Africa. And if you like, you can go and do the uh, B technology. Those in the industry still prefer the HND than the BSc. So they should be given this capacity, uh, you know, approval to, you know, to award degrees. But they should not be stopped from awarding ND, HND. In fact, we are trying to expand the scope of all techniques to go beyond ND and HND. We want them to start awarding the NSQF qualifications, the skills qualification. Federal government has approved the National Skills Qualification Framework, and NSQF. And there is need for polytechnics to roll out those programs, and therefore more funding is needed in the polytechnics, in the polytechnic sector, and there is need for recognition of this sector as the major driver for the industrialization of Nigeria. As we always say, we need to develop degree uh, skills more than degrees. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, we are doing it the, the other way around. For every university graduate of engineering, you require nothing less than five HND holders in a properly managed economy. In Nigeria, it's the reverse. If you go to a construction site, any of this road construction being done in Kaduna, any of those bridges being built in Kaduna, is one engineer who will design it. But he needs several technologists who will do the nitty gritties of fixing those iron bars. You need artisans who will be mixing the cement. These artisans and technologists and technicians is what the protectors are supposed to be churning out. But in the, unfortunately, we are producing more degree holders than these artists. So there is need for a rethink, a total re-engineering of the educational sector so that TEDx can be given the necessary priority. All right. So just two days ago, the National Assembly, uh, a bill which seeks to prohibit or to abolish HNDBSE that put me as second reading. Yes. What do you think of the What do what you think on that? Well, it's a good development. Uh, it's a good move. It's only the public sector that is discriminating against HND holders. The private sector knows the value of HND holders. And they allow them to reach the highest peak in their career. Only the public sector, because the public sector is dominated by degree holders. And for that reason, they have been discriminated against the HND holders. The HND holders are a different track. They have the skills to deliver. And therefore, there is need therefore to recognize that and to allow them to reach the highest level, even become permanent secretaries in the ministries and become chief executive officers in the past sectors. Nothing should stop them from doing that. Because as they move up the ladder, they do attend management courses, conferences, and that adds value, just like the degree holders. So it's only in Nigeria that, that, that this is happening. Even here in the MBTE, there is I have found discrimination against HIV holders. And I've said from our, in our next promotion, all these discriminations will go. If, not, if anybody, does, if anybody, you know, the MB should be the first to recognize that you know, parity between degree and HND. And uh, I'm very happy with this passage of the law. It is in a way giving us legal budget to do the necessary in order to allow HND to reach the highest level. 
uh, and that I said, we have no reason. It's only an economy which does not value skills that can behave this way. And I'm happy the National Assembly has, has now, with this position of being, they are bringing an end to that injustice. All right, so what, what are your visions? Well, my vision really is to revamp the MBTE. I found a place, let me use a very strong word, in shambles. Due process has been abused. The building for more than 10 years has not been rehabilitated. The sector is not motivated. The staff are demoralized. Very few are being sent on training. And they are supposed to be the regulators. We have written to take fund that we do the quality assurance aspect of education and we should be allowed to send our staff on training on the sponsorship of that fund. There is discrimination all over and that's why Nigeria has having serious problems. So we are determined here in the MBTE to really uh, bring this sector in the forefront. We, we, we shall do some advocacy so that the nation can understand the value of Tibet. This is the way out for rebuilding the national economy. So my vision is really to bring back the MBTE to where it's supposed to be. I used to know the MBTE more than 20 years ago. It used to be a very vibrant place, and uh, unfortunately things went wrong, and we're determined to bring them back on track. All right, sir. Lastly, um, we know the challenges of insecurity in Nigeria. How would you say insecurity has affected both not just vocational education, general education in Nigeria? Well, insecurity is, should be the number one agenda of government. The late Umar uh, Musa came with a seven-point agenda. And I'm appealing to this government just to adopt a one-point agenda now. Forget about everything, let us face security. There is need for us to re-engineer. I'm happy Mr. President has appointed new service chiefs. We lost one of them, very, very, very agile, very, you know, focused. But another one has been appointed now. My hope is they will be given all the necessary uh, resources to clear insecurity within six months. And the way to do it is simply to apply what the House has called Serkinia Yad Serkin Therapy. These non state actors, they don't have air force, they don't have surface to air missiles, they don't have surface to surface missiles, they don't have nuclear weapons. They only carry AK-47, RPG, and machine guns. How can they overhaul a modern, well-trained army, if not for lack of numbers? The secret to the failure of the security of the country is simply lack of numbers. Nigeria, with a population of 200 million, needs an army of nothing less than 2 million. Saddam Hussein was leading Iraq. 50 million, but 1 million were under arms. Even if we don't can have two, two, 2 million, let us get 1 million. Today it's just 200 and 230,000 or so. The police is just a little over 300,000. It's dismally low. By the time you send 200,000 armed men, even without sophisticated air cover, without modern technology, they will clear some visa. Another 100,000 will clear the Brinogwai, that is Brinogwai. 100,000 will clear that uh, uh, Because the bandits are just in hundreds. Even the Boko Haram is just totally about 5,000. So the best way is let us put, and we have young Nigerians ready to go and fight for this country. So all these challenges of insecurity, the secret is simply a game of numbers. We have refused to upgrade the numbers. The numbers now are dismally low. And there is need for government to really look into this very seriously. Minimum we need 1 million Nigerian army, 1 million Nigerian uh, uh, police. And if possible, let us mobilize the hunters who know terrains, the local terrains, so that they can be integrated into this. And with that, you know, we'll be able to turn around this within six months. Thank you, sir. So that we can have a free 2023 election. All right, sir. And there are a lot of question marks hanging in there. Yes, we pray God will continue to guide the leaders so that things can take their proper direction. Thank you, sir. How's everything, sir? Uh, 
mahimmancin ani ta cibiyar na koras da ilimin fasaha na koyon aikin hannu da kuma ainihin yadda take korasuwa na ita wannan da su kula da wannan cibiyar to manalla ita wannan hukuma ta MBTE hukuma ce da ke kula da tafiyar da kwalejojin fasaha kimiya da fasaha da kwalejojin da ke koyar da sana'ar hannu ma'anar a uh, shi wannan uh, fanni na tilet shine wato abubuwan da mutun zai yi da hannun sa to tun ga ni zo mu ture dama muna da sana'o in hannun mu wanda muka gada daga iyaye da kakanni sababbi sun shigo kuma ana horas wa a makarantu an kawo makarantu kimiya da fasaha for techniques an kawo masu fasaha guda daya for techniques an kafa wato makarantu ko yadda kanori daban-daban na koyi da sana'a to ita wannan hukuma ita take fitar da minhajin da za a yi wajen karantar da ba da wannan karatu kuma wannan minhajin ana fitar da ita ne yanda wanda ya gama wannan karatu da yake masa na fi aiki ko ya ke kafa mu kansa sa da wurin aiki ya ci gaban cin abincin sa to wannan tsari da wannan hukuma ta kula da shi shine aka ba mu nauyin sa muna kula da makarantu sun kai 140 a cikin kasar nan a fannoni daban-daban kuma mu ke zaga mu tabbatar suna koyar da abin da ya dace kuma mu ba su izinin su ba da certificate din suke ba da to wannan shi ne ne a takaice abin da MBTE take yi kuma ci biye mu tana nan da duna da dan karamin office a Abuja to na kare da ka zo wannan hukuma ya ka zo wannan mahaja na koyar da ilimin fasaha na aikin hannu ya yi dai da yadda za a yi gogayya da wannan zaman gaskiya wannan muka samu a ƙasa abin da ya ba dadin faɗa wasu an fitar da mahajin nan tun 1980 da wani abu yau kusa shekara 40 kenan ba a canza salon su duniya ta canza wanda lokaci ko computer ba kirki ba sai dai irin mainframe din nake samu a wurare jpg abubuwa su canza fasaha ta canza saboda haka akwai bukata yanzu mu zo mu zauna kuma muna nan mun fara zama domin a gayyato mutanen da suke masana'antu industry so ta hoso hadu da malamai a zauna da mu mutanen MBTE a sake tsari na manhajojin nan mun fara amma akwai aiki mai yawa gaban mu muna bukatar tallafi ne daga gwamnatin na kudi wanda za a rika yin wadannan taruruka domin a fitar da sababbin minhaja manhaja wanda za su yi daidai da wannan zaman bayan nan kuma akwai fanni na sana'a da gwamnati ta fitar da shi wanda gwamnatin tariya ta ba da amincewa a yi shi ana ce mishi NSQF ba dole sai ka yi diploma ba ba sai ka yi degree ba sai ka yi diploma ba za ka iya zuwa ba ko ba ka jin ba turanci aje a gwada sana'ar da kake yi a kariya a ba ka shede kariya sai a ba ka horo zuwa a kai ka level na gaba muna da level ɗaya zuwa shida na shida nan da yake yake da mai babban degree na gaba na biyar da yake da mai degree ko mai HND na hudu da yake da mai MD ko makamancin haka ko SCE saboda haka wannan shine kuma saban wato tsari da muke san a karfe ba for taking experience yanda za a je yanzu mutanen fante ka yanzu abubuwan da suke yi na fasaha mu ka nuna for taking already ta fara zama da su an fara aiki na na horas wa muna fata sauran protein ma za su yi haka akwai kuma wato fasawoyi da aka gada da kira da jima da din da dinkin hula da duk wadannan wannan hukuma tana da wato tsari na su ma za a ba su abin da ake cewa RPL recognition of prior learning sai a fitar musu da tsarin inganta su su ma a ba su shi takarda shi da cewa sun iya kuma a ba su horo domin su kai level na gaba to wannan dai abubuwa suna da yawa kamar yadda na faɗa muku muna dai fata a hankali in gwamnati ba mu tallafi na kudi za a iya samu a tafi da wani ayyuka inda za a inganta kuma bunkasa sana'o'in hannu ga matasan Najeriya nan da yawa birjik ba sana'a ta wasu hajjin sun yi ma ba sana'a kuma ba su da fasaha da za su yi sana'a saboda haka ya kamata a fada da wannan harka ta koyar da sana'a da fasaha ta hannu yanda yaran mu ma in sun samu wadannan takaddun sheda ba sai su tsaya a Najeriya ba in ka je kasashen gabas ta tsakiya gashin 
ana nemo masu gyaro mota masu fadal fita masu gyaro mota gas nan burjin ana nema ba musu masu yin pop masu yin tires burjin ayan ganda ana nemo su da yawa amma mutanen mu ba su da tafiya da sheda da za a ba su visa su fita su aiki to wannan hukuma tana kokarin ta fitar da tsari yanda duk portakin su take Nigeria da su ruka dauka wadannan matasa a koyon musu a ba su ta bin sheda yanda za su ruka ma zuwa ba a Nigeria kai su ma je kasashen waje su yi aiki su kawo kudin mai ake ce mushi foreign exchange su ruka kawo Nigeria kudin foreign exchange kasashe da yawa India Egypt kasashe ne wanda sun lau da masu koyon mama masu aiki a waje domin samun kudin musaya na foreign exchange to sai ga da kamar yadda ka bada wayar nan aikace aikace da horasuwa na bukatan kudi sosai kuma sai mu kai lakari da irin kudaden da ake ba jami'o'i wanda suke samun da degree fiye da college of fasaha da kimiya ana wani kira da ka samu wannan da za ka wa majalisan kasa domin ta ba da cikakken tallafi da kolojin kimiya da fasaha abin da muke kira ga majalisar kasa shine yanzu ka duba abin da ake ba da wa na budget na na kasan kasafin kudi na jami'a za ku kullun kalluka so biyu so uku abin da ake ba ku ta bayan su ku ta kira sun fi bukatar na'urori masu tsada da boys da sana'a mashin mashin na workshops janawi da ko ko shafin ma ba su shi amma sai a ba su kudi fiye da portakin wannan bi dadi ba na biyu in ka je tech fund kudin da take a tech fund take ba jami'a ya nuna na portakin akan miza'i haka na uku muna hangen cewa ya kamata gwamnati ta fitar da wani sabon tsari da za a fitar da kudin inganta sana'a national skills fund ya kamata masana'antu da sauran inda ake karbar haraji a fitar da wani dan bangare kadan daga cikin su a kawo su a kira shi national skills fund wannan NSF shi muke son a dauka akai for techniques a gina manyan wurare koyon sana'a akai garuruwa da local governments ma a fitar da wurin koyon da sana'o'in har yara matasa in gama secondary school wanda bai je jami'a ba yanzu a koya mai sana'a a ba shi kuma kwali cewa ya iya da wannan yanzu ya nemi aiki ko nan Nigeria ko Allah ya ce ki ci ma je kasashen waje ya musu aiki wannan ita ce kai hangi da za a samu a samu zaman lafiya a Nigeria saboda yawanci wannan matsala da nasarorishin tsaro da ake ciki akwai rishin aiki ya ce sanda ka ba matasa wannan horo da kuma takaddun sheda wannan zai wato zai ba su dama su je ko ina a duniya su samu aiki kuma akwai wurare aiki da yawa a duniya ana nemi mutane mutane Asia su suke amfani da wannan dama su je kaga yan filipino sun cika Saudi Arabia yan filipino sun cika Dubai saboda ni babu yan Nigeria da mun fi kusa da su a kan filipino da Saudi Arabia da Dubai amma ba mu da takaddun shela ga matasan fa sai wanda ake da su a kance ka shekaru da ruka da wadannan kusan shekara sabai suna wannan sana'a amma ba mu takaddun shela so yanzu muna san a fitar da tsarin da an ma fitar da shi muna san a aiwatar domin duk masu sana'a hannu a auna sana'a su a ba su takaddun sheda a ƙara musu horo a ƙara ba su takaddun sheda su je su nemi aiki ko cikin gida ko kasashen waje to har yanzu dai muna kan mutum takaddun sheda a ko yau duka da ita majalisa ta zarta na ganin cewa za ka kawo daidaito game da masu ilimi babban ilimi na diploma wato HND wanda da sai ga mutum ya da HND ko dan ba ce da shi gaba abin zai zai wahala sai wanda yake da degree kuma shi wanda yake da HND sai ga ba yana da wani ilimi na fasaha wanda shi ya ma fi mai degree din da zaka ce da haka to wannan dama rishin fahimta ne da hukuma gwamnati take hukuma mai gwamnati suke wannan nuna bambanci na na mai HND da mai degree ma a kitun gwamnati ne kada ake yinsa in ka je masu sana'antu ba ruwan su masana'anta gwargwadon aikin ta gwargwadon albashin ka ba ruwan su da degree da ka tara saboda haka na yi farin ciki da ita hukuma ake ce mata yan majalisa 
suka zarta da doka wanda ta janye wannan bambanci ko anan NBTE na samu mutanen da suke da HND sun kai level 12 sun shekar 10000 bayan musu proposal kuma na ce in Allah ya da shi promotion mai zuwa jiza a musu akan ni saboda mi sun da HND ma ya bi mai degree din samun iya aiki na hannu in ka doke shi a matsayin secretary a office din ka ya bi mu zaka mai degree ya bi mai degree ya iya wannan aiki kuma bayan nan in suka je level din nan na 10 sha 10 sha muna tura su ko sa ko sai na sanin makama aiki duk abin da mai degree yake su ma suna ba yi takiya ba shi wato da ma hukumomin gwamnati ne suke da wannan bambanci masana'antu ba sa nuna to mu yi farin ciki yanzu cewa majalisa ta janye wannan bambanci kuma muna fata za a yi wata da shi domin bayan wannan dokai dole ita head of service ta ruto mana takarda cewa an janye wannan skill of service ma a gyara shi dama mu mun sake tsarin skill of service wannan sa ta muka kai mai head of service kuma mun riga dama mun yi wannan gyara ba sauran bambanci ga HND saboda ka yara matasa da ke son su zo ta ta kinin don Allah su zo bila addinin mamuna ne musu zo domin ta hannu wannan hanya ne za ka rufa ba tattalin arzikin Najeriya karatun jami'a ya zai yi tsada mu fa ta kinin din mu ba ma da ne mu karo makaranta saboda kuma na neman da dabai don Allah su yo su taho su shigo ko ta kinin din nan su yi ND su yi HND duk inda mai degree ke kaiwa mai HND ma insha Allah zai yi kuma kare ne wani guri kike da shi na ganin wannan hukuma ta ci gaba fiye da yadda take a da to gaskiya mun samu hukumar a cikin wani hali na inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun saboda wuri ne wanda da na san shi shekaru 21 na yi rafta a wata polytechnic a nasarawa misali na san sadda nake zuwa nan wurin in ga wurin ana harka 